Hi everyone, welcome back to week 13 of MEM 30031A cluster 32A Operate Computer Aided Design System to produce SVAC drawing Now before we start, disclaimer, this online recording is intended for internal teaching only within South Metropolitan T, Kalal WA campus only you may not either directly or through the use of any device or other means copy, download, upload, publish the content unless expressly permitted by South Metropolitan TAF in writing. Alright, we are now in week 13 of this term. So we are here. And in week 17, you have a little test like the previous semester. So don't worry too much about the test. The test would likely be we will give you an engineering sketch from uh, one of the engineer in my company. So this is a real life scenario and then you have to draw it. So the project has been finished and commissioned. I had the permission from the engineer to reuse his sketch and you can practice with that. So before week 17, we also need your uh, assignment too. Would be great if you can submit everything by week 17. So we have nothing uh, overdue by then. Now regarding the test, we are instructed by Dave to do blended delivery. You may need to come to the campus in week 17 as the government also plan to ease the restriction. By 18 of May, we might be able to come back but see how we go. Otherwise, we might need to do it uh, online or you can come during the day with Seth. So in week 13, um, what I want to discuss is the standard in HVAC industry. So we had touched base on that one before, but I just want to, to give you a little bit more information. Uh, when you're going out in the industry, you know where where to go in terms of standard, so you not um, get confused. And then meanwhile please practice your assignment, sorry, please complete your assignment too as a practice. Uh, uh, one of our aim is also interpreting HVAC drawing, so by doing practice on as, uh, assignment two, that will help you to interpret and understand what's going on. Now I know it's a bit difficult for you who haven't been in the air conditioning industry before, because interpreting HVAC drawing also involving understanding the system. The Carl Tave using chill water and heating water system. So if you're not familiar with it, drop me an email and ask me ask me what does it means. Okay? Otherwise uh, there's a lot of books in the library that you can borrow on the chill water system. One of book I think what I saw before is on uh, library, not sure which section you asked the librarian, but it's a train book or train training course. And the other one is the basic of refrigeration system by Graham Boyle. You can borrow that one. Now regarding the standard in industry, I would like to survey two two standards, one from Australia and one from America. So in Australia, if you Google HVAC drawing standard, the first one coming out is Magna Cat standard. This is American. Okay, so Magna, we'll, we'll, we'll come back into Magna after this. This is us, of course, and 
another one is technical drawing by Standard Australia. So I would like to discuss the technical drawing standard first. Now I have downloaded this standard from our library. It's gonna expire. It will be expired um, in a couple of days and I can't open it anymore. So you can do the same with your uh, standard in the library. You can ask the librarian how to obtain this standard. Now this is standard 1100 and as far as I know in industry when we create a project specification we would say drafting in accordance to AS 1100 and we didn't say dot 101 or dot 102 we just say AS 1100 so it's kind of like um, we take this standard for granted without knowing what's inside or we referring specifically what clause we will see the why in the minute so let's have a look at this Australian standard oh by the way the last revision is 1992 reconfirmed 2014 this standard still valid from 1992 okay not nothing changed much. Now this standard there are four parts 101, 102, 103, 104 um, they, they speak on different field so 201 here covering the mechanical engineering drawing we'll come back into that in a sec so back to 101 if you scroll down this standard also in agreement with the ISO standard so ISO is international standard so on top of this standard you have to also have a look if you want to enhance your standard uh, drawing you have to have a look ISO 128 up to 6410 so this is quite a cumbersome process but bear with me in the sec now let's have a look at the content the content is talking about uh, types of drawings what is the size of drawing sheet what is the layout type of lines line space density letters scales now section 1 to 5 pretty much we have covered that in last semester remember when I show you the BMW and Curtin and SMWC which is the company that I work with the standard everybody has different standard how they um, dimensioning the line, how they space the line, what's the density uh, very particular, what is letter and number Ef everybody has different way of interpret interpreting it so it's not kind of following this standard this standard is become not a standard is become like a guideline to develop our guideline if that makes sense but don't throw this standard away into the bin because you have to have this standard this is the basic of the drawing but for the HVAC course uh, that we have I'm not going to ask you to to read this in the class I would you to download this standard and just get yourself um, familiarize with this standard okay now we keep going down here speak of abbreviation uh, keep going down it's pretty long it's 
speaking of paper size which is already internationally standard so A4 is definitely to 10 to 97 if you buy a paper from office work A4 or A3 the size you will you will get dimension with prefer sheet with wider border um, another sheet as well template projection now just quickly on projection we normally do this projection if um, we do drawing for machinery I think some of you work in machinery before so you will familiar with this so the way we look because when why we have a projection because we draw it in 2D, we're not drawing in 3D such as in Revit. Revit is quite new in industry and the standard of Revit is still being compiled by a body so you probably don't have much uh, governing in Revit yet. There is a Revit standard which is pretty pretty thick and they're still revising it not like this which has been there for from 1992 so when you look or you cut um, a drawing or a body or an object in the 2D or a cat, you can have third angle projection or you can have first angle projection. We normally use third angle projection and you will see that in the minute. Thickness of format line, border line, projection symbol, grid lines. Now this is already governed in BMW standard or guideline or curtain guideline. But if they if you work from the company that doesn't have any specific um, CAT standard, you can back referring to eleven hundred so you set it into this setting as well. Still talking about um, drawing sheet, title block, this is how they make the title block but as you see in semester in, in previous semester we, uh, everyone got different idea of title block sometimes you can have title block vertical sometimes um, horizontal like that or like that so there is no hard way to do it. We learn how to make title block. I, I instructed you what's the important item that you should go in title block is pretty much here. Now if you want to redo your title block based on this, I have no problem whatsoever. And please do that. That will be a good practice. And um, keep going. This is the lines. What's the lines? What's the type of the line? What the example of the line? Uh, what is the application? What is the example? Okay, so that stick like that is hidden. That we use that quite a lot in HVAC because sometimes we have duck on top of each other. So the duck at the bottom because we look from the top. The, top, the duck at the bottom will be this line because it's hidden and dimension of the line the thickness again government curtain us and other company has different has different idea on on this uh, thickness now application of the line is here keep going keep going So you can see most of the stuff in this standard is cover more, uh, general masonry, except of course SVAC. Okay. So this is the character. Oops, sorry. Now have 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 a scroll on this standard. 
our projection. Um, when you draw again, when you draw an image or an object in 2D, you want to have a projection so we know uh, what does it look from the left, from the right, from the top, or from the bottom. In HVAC, we hardly have a projection because what we draw everything is flat. If you have, you have a look at your Carlisle uh, TAFE assignment, what you see is just flat. You're not seeing um, an object like this. But we do cut what we call a section. We're not cutting a projection. We do cut section in certain space. We cut section so we know what the dark uh, elevation is or pipe elevation and how the pipe and the duct are put together because that's a tight space for example. But we do have third angle projection and then this is the first angle projection. So you can s you can see slightly different here. They pretty much on the reverse so A A is your object from the top and then it's been swapped so B is on the top on first angle E on the top the F is the same the D and the C are swapped okay So if you read through, it will be more explanation on this standard and I'm not going to bore, bore you with this. You can have a read. It's 245 pages. So this is one of the Australian standard, part 101. Let's quickly have a look part 201. Now part 201 is mechanical drawing. Now when they say mechanical, does really mechanical like this. Now HVAC is normally uh, is, is a branch of mechanical engineering but we're not drawing anything machinery, we're not drawing bearing, we're not uh, drawing uh, gears or things like that and I can't really see in this standard uh, about HVAC think some of it like uh, direction of the flow which is we normally use in our pipe works and things like that you got the idea which is mechanical now standard 301 401 talk about civil and structure so there is there is not much help for us to start the HVAC drawing now the next standard is from American. So this is a SMACNA CAT standard. So SMACNA stands for Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning Contractors National Association. So it, this is a USA, not Australia. But we tend to follow them quite a lot because they have a pretty good uh, specific standard on air conditioning. So when you say CAT standard here, <coughs> it's actually for air conditioning and refrigeration. So we do adopt quite a lot from the SMACNA. I'm um, pretty sure SMACNA book you can borrow from library, otherwise uh, I think quick search on Google you will have some the old edition probably 1996 or 2000 uh, this is a 2001, so you probably have the 1996 for free. Now, quickly on this SMACNA. It quite similar to 1100 standard. Talking about layers, um, guideline for layer use mechanical layer, plumbing layer, fire layers. So this standard already specify what kind of layer 
that you have to do for different um, surfaces which is good so this is kind if, if you open your uh, BMW CAT standard it will also talk something similar like this this is designated for mechanical this is designated for others but SMAGNA goes on and cover everything else duct symbol equipment piping CAT protocol checklist and everything so this SMAGNA is very good standard I'm going to skip layers because um, like I said before different body has different layer naming so, uh, abbreviation so abbreviation here you always put it on your legend you might have different abbre abbreviation BHP, brake horsepower, BLR, boiler, sometimes we just say B. We're not speaking boiler. And again, this is USA. We might have different um, in interpretation in Australia. Duck symbol. So, duck symbol, and of course, is in inch, but we normally follow the uh, the symbol quite faithfully in, in here in our industry FT top of the duct fitting is flat means if you have a transition the top fitting is flat so the transition is e either on the sides or on the on the bottom we leave we, we leave that decision to the duct manufacturer but it want the top flat so the reason is you can mount that fitting um, as high as possible against the say the slab above or there's a roof above that you you want to mount it very close and the opposite is FB bottom of duct fitting is flat TD top down fitting down 6 inch and you can read that rise drop means um, the duck rise up or the duck drop now we're not using rise as far as we know I think we use uh, SU stand for set up and drop we use SD or set down but it does mean the same thing not tag so and revision tag revision tag we know we use we use quite um, a lot in in Australia so the revision tag stay the same static pressure tag um, sometimes we have diamond sometimes we have square room name we're not following it quite um, faithfully thermostat sometimes we have round sometimes square I mean a yeah, square you meet you meet uh, TT sensor or you meet the start sometimes we have round sometimes we have square but this symbol is very good because it does refer specifically to his VAC component unlike the 1100 so if you do struggle with his VAC component open smack now and this is 16 uh, inch by 12 inch but we do the same thing in Australia for example internally insulated sheet metal duct so you got thick line out there on the outside and then test line on the inside showing insulation however like I said before sometimes the drawing is getting too crowded then you you can't really differentiate what is the thick outside and then test line inside so we use hatch instead for insulation so you want a 25 50 75 or 100 so that's a duck symbol keep going please do read this this is very handy um, 
equipment symbol we touched base on equipment symbols before on the first uh, on the week 10 remember the pump symbol is like that chiller symbol I kind of like not do not like that it just doesn't tell us what chiller is we normally just use the chiller cat file from the manufacturer if we have it and then we just put it in the cat cooling tower like this practice exchanger uh, unit heater centrifugal fan humidifier remember we have different humidifier we normally use a box with a propeller for axial fan and then we not differentiate between fan axial, fan axial variable pits or propeller we just say this is a fan symbol refer to schedules for the model number so centrifugal fan we'll skip that Oh, by the way, this centrifugal fan is used quite uh, faithfully in fan industry, so they're following SMACNA standard. So if you see this symbol when you're ordering the fan, just be careful. Um, check the rotation in your drawing, who, which way. If you are a contractor, you want to order the fan, always do check this symbol. If we are consultant, we generally don't do this. We we just want to say the fa um, the airflow coming from the left has to go up but when you order the fan they will give you kind of similar with this sheet and then it will say uh, tick which um, position that you want and please specify whether the motor is on the left or on the right so you have to get it right otherwise if you order the, the wrong equipment wouldn't fit on the side. Piping, so it's mostly on hydraulic system, but we do have a piping in mechanical such as steam, uh, boiler blow down, boiler feed water. This is our, our uh, symbol as well hot water, chill water, compressed air. Valve symbol, three way, always like that. Close ball, ball valve. We normally do not differentiate between open and close, we just say this is ball valve. Butterfly valve, we do it slightly differently, but you will get the idea. Okay, so there's a valve, there's a check valve, and many other valves. going to skip environmental control. Environmental control by the way is not uh, doing and nothing to do with environment friendly control. It means how you control your space. Okay. So these are the sensors on your space that been air conditioned that try you try to control whether it's temperature or humidity. Fire, cat project protocol. Now, cat project protocol here, like I say, if you work in a company later on, you that company will have most likely will have a cat protocol in place. But if you happen to work with say a company that is quite new then if they ask you to develop a CAD protocol go to SMACNA go to this appendix A CAD protocol this is a very good protocol that you can um, adopt in the company and you can set the layers accordingly or you can use a BMW as your base because BMW people mostly work for government and the government CAT standard is free and available online in their website. Now, 
if you go to SmackDown website, SmackDown also cover other bits and pieces such as like uh, duck construction um, and other other things like how you construct the duck, how you draw the duck. So have a look the SmackDown. Uh, SmackDown, unfortunately, you have to pay for it, but have a look in the library if there is a available book. So that's it for today. Please continue with your assignment two. And when you do assignment two, do not just trace the assignment, but the assignment I gave it to you for two reasons. One is to practice your cat skill because you need to practice otherwise you, you, you wouldn't be able to get used to it with your hand and all the command and all the uh, mouse and all this um, position of your cursor that's quite important but number two the most important things after the practice is interpre interpretation so practice will give you a jump start you might forgot how to use cat after this course I'm fully aware of that I've been there I've done cat when I was at TAFE that's 2005-2006 I didn't use it until I was at uni three years later and then pretty much I have to um, start again from the bottom but I pick up very quickly and then three years later I do not use the cat until I got a job in the company then when I start to use cat again and that would be my learning ground so practice will give you a base start but interpreting HVAC drawing is very important once you understand and train your eyes to look the HVAC drawing, that skill will stay with you almost forever. So that will give you a, uh, a head with all your competitors in the workforce because you are familiar with it. And then I pick Kalal because Kalal drawing is very old school, plus it contains a multiple system which is quite handy to um, to practice with thing is it missing a DX system but that's why DX is, is is not hard to understand but chill water and heating water system that is quite interesting system by itself alright I'll see you next week and keep practicing